news on this week. All over the television, the radio, the print media, all about a person that we all admire. Yes, Lawrence Yogi Berra passed away. Age know who Yogi Berra is, but if you don't, he was an American baseball player. Played in the 50s and 60s. Won 10 world champions, chips, and was voted the most valuable player three times. Yogi was an American icon. He was raised in a poor Italian section of St. Louis to immigrant parents. He may be one of the most quoted persons of our time. It was Yogi who coined the phrase, it ain't over till it's over. Yogi was a devout Catholic and even at one time had an audience with St. John the 23rd. He had a way with words no matter how he fractured them. Such as, if you come to a fork in the road, take it. Or, it gets late there very early. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm well aware that the Pope is also in town. Papa Francisco, a man himself who is very quotable, such as, who am I to judge? Or, life is a journey. When we stop, things do not go right. Well, this last Thursday, His Holiness addressed the U.S. Congress. Do you think our Congress could do a better job of serving the citizens in this country? Is that a yes or a yes? Believe it or not, 41% of the members of Congress purport to be Catholic. And the leaders of the Republicans, John Boehner, and the Democrats, Nancy Pelosi, both claim Catholicism as their faith. My question is, if there are so many Catholics there, including the leaders, why do they continue to move this country away from the teachings of Jesus and toward the policies of immediate gratification? Well, I think the Pope nailed it when he said to Congress, why are deadly weapons being sold to those who plan to inflict untold suffering on individuals and society? Sadly, the answer, as we all know, is simply for money. Money that is drenched in blood, often innocent blood. Well, it sort of happened that yesterday morning in the San Jose Mercury News, there's a political cartoon, and it may have been in some other papers, and I wish we had our audiovisual equipment up and running so you could actually see this. But what it is, it's the Pope addressing Congress, and he's saying, members of Congress, obey the golden rule. And the Congress people are all jumping up and down, going, amen, 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 holding up a sign that says, he who has the gold rules. <laughs> well, a few years ago, Nancy Pelosi, the leaders of the Democrats, also from San Francisco, was asked why she so often voted in direct contradiction to the teachings of her faith. And her answer was, I need to vote the way the people in my district want me to vote. Well, Ms. Pelosi, I think the real answer is that for you and for those who continue to allow automatic weapons, abortion, capital punishment, the right to commit suicide, I refuse to call it death with dignity because I've had a couple close friends in the last couple years who have died, one with lung cancer, one with brain cancer, and their lives and their death were both very dignified because they chose Christ as a friend for their journey. But Ms. Pelosi, the real answer why you and other career politicians vote the way you do is because it helps you to raise money and to be re-elected. The goal for career politicians is always to be re-elected. Thomas More was a career politician, but he didn't act that way. He was the subject of a movie and play called A Man for All Seasons. He was the Lord Chancellor in England during the reign of Henry VIII. The King Henry pressured Thomas into interceding for him 
with the Pope so that he could dissolve his marriages and then remarry. Thomas More, while professing his love and respect for Henry, refused to bend to the will of instant gratification and stood resolute in defense of the church's policies. When asked why he wouldn't bend, even though his life had made, been made a living hell, he made this statement. I think that when statesmen forsake their own private conscience for the sake of the public duties, they lead their country by a short route to chaos. In other words, what he was saying is those in power who do not follow their conscience, but bow to the pressure from others with their own agenda, will lead the country to ruin. By the way, Thomas More was beheaded for refusing to bow to the demands of the king. And that brings us back to the gospel. Thomas More believed it was better to be accepted into heaven without his head than to spend eternity in hell with his body intact. And unfortunately, there are people in the world today who are having to answer that question every day. Christians in the Middle East and the Coptic Christians in Egypt face that on a daily basis. They are asked to renounce their faith or to face death. Well, in the Western world, we don't face that type of immediate danger, but we nevertheless face the danger of loss of our souls, especially if we continue the policies that will eventually lead us to chaos and ruin. There are many types of sin. One of them is the chase for money. Many people make that the main goal of their life. But there are others that relegate money to its rightful place. And that is a place where it can help others in need. Have you heard of the fast food restaurant Chick-fil-A? There's now two in Fremont, if you weren't aware. One's in, on Maori, the other is on Audemars Parkway. It just opened this week. They are a friendly and customary, customer oriented fast food place. If you like to go out to eat on Sundays, do not go to Chick fil A. <laughs> they aren't open. The owner believed his employees should spend Sunday with their families and not have to make a choice between going to work or attending church. And he also required in his will that his heirs never make the company a publicly traded company because doing so would require them to cut back on their charitable contributions. That man, S. Truett Cathy, was a man of integrity who did not chase money to make more money. Yes, in his life, he made a boatload of money, but he didn't sacrifice his soul to make more. He could have done that by opening on Sundays or letting the company go public and reaping in the money that those two, two steps would take, but that's not what he was about. He was a simple man. He described himself as just somebody who fries chicken. He refused to bend to pressure to change the faith tenets which he lived day to day. May God have mercy on his soul. Well, in the gospel it says, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If we took that literally, this is what I would look like. In fact, I probably wouldn't have any arms. But let's be clear. Our hands, our feet, our eyes, or any other physical part of our body are not what causes us to sin. The cause of our sin is our heart and our mind. And God is not asking us to cut out our hearts or our minds just to cut out the offending parts of them. And the church gives us a way to do that through the auspices of Jesus Christ. It's called the Sacrament of Reconciliation. If we are truly remorseful, we are able to receive absolution for our sins through this wonderful sacrament. God forgives with no stipulations as long as we are sincere in our asking. And that's a good thing. 
because who among us is not a sinner? And that came to light this week with the canonization of St. Junipero Serra. It raised a lot of questions about whether what he did was good or evil in the founding of the California missions. But being raised to sainthood does not mean that you are a perfect person in your life. All of our saints were sinners. In fact, some were more than others. But they overcame the issues they had with sin through the sacraments and are now in heaven where they help to intercede for us with God the Father. Well, will Pope Francis end up in heaven? Is that a yes or a yes? I think he will. But upon his election to the papacy, one of his first statements was, I am a sinner. He acknowledged that. But being a sinner will not stop his entry to eternal rest with the Father. And just as we are all sinners, that will not stop our entry. We can remove what has caused us to sin by prayer and reconciliation, and therefore also be with God through eternity. So don't chop your hand off because it ain't over till it's over. God bless you all.